Hello, my name is Dr Hannah Rosa. I'm a locum GP working in the northeast of England and I also co-host the GP Notebook study groups. Welcome to the GP Notebook podcast where we discuss bite-sized topics aimed at all those working in primary care. You can find us on all major podcast platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. Please follow us to receive notifications about new episodes. And if you like what you hear, please consider leaving a review to help other listeners find us. You can also follow us on Twitter at GP Notebook for more information about new podcast episodes and study groups. Finally, you can visit gpnotebookpodcasts.com for podcast episode show notes and gpnotebookeducation.com to find out more about upcoming study group meetings. In this episode, we'll be discussing sustainability within general practice, and we're going to cover a range of issues from recycling medical blister packs to wildflowers, from inhalers to rethinking the printer paper we use. In 2009, The conclusion of the first Lancet Climate Change Commission was that climate change is the biggest global health threat of the 21st century. In response to this, in October 2020, the NHS became the world's first health service to commit to reaching carbon net zero. Its target is to have reduced the emissions that the NHS controls to net zero by 2040. And in July 2022, it published its plan for how it is going to deliver this. So what does all this mean for general practice? Well, I've done my research and come up with 10 practical tips for how we in primary care can make a difference. My aim for these tips was for them to be things we could all start doing right away. So I've avoided suggesting that we all install solar panels or buy an electric vehicle for home visits, which would be good ideas, but unlikely to be changes that practically we could all make quickly. So without any further delays, here are my 10 practical tips. Well, the first tip has to focus on recycling. We all know that non-confidential paper and cardboard waste should be recycled But practically, how does this happen where you work? Do you have a recycling box in your practice? If so, do all members of staff know where it is? And is it in the most practical space? What about empty medicine blister packs? Well, I recently discovered that these can be recycled at every superdrug pharmacy. Please note, it needs to be a superdrug pharmacy, not just a superdrug store. So why not set up a blister packs collection box in your surgery for all staff and patients to use? And then when it's full, it can be dropped off at your local superdrug pharmacy. Next, it's batteries. As we use a fair amount of these in primary care, they're in our ophthalmoscopes, SATs probes, thermometers, to name but a few things. When it comes to recycling them, there are so many options, including Valpax Free Battery Collection Service or dropping them off at local recycling centres. But my favourite option is setting up your own battery collection box that all staff and patients can use and when full, dropping it off at a Cancer Research UK charity shop. The charity then receives a cash donation for your old batteries meaning that we can help raise money for further research into cancer treatments simply by recycling. And lastly, when it comes to recycling, we need to think about inhalers. Metered dose inhalers contain powerful greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. So they need to be incinerated to destroy the gases rather than letting them go to landfill. When we issue patients with these inhalers, we should let them know to return them when empty to their local pharmacies. The Green Practice Toolkit have a poster which you can print off and display in your surgeries informing patients of this. Please see the show notes for further information. 
My second tip is around turning things off. The Energy Saving Trust estimates that the average home could save approximately £75 a year if it turned off lights, TVs and computers rather than leaving them on or on standby mode. So at work, as well as shutting down computers at the end of the day and turning lights off whenever you leave your room, think about other electrical items such as printers. Do you turn it off at the end of each day or is it left on standby? Other appliances such as microwaves with LCD clocks, consider these. Could these be turned off at the plug each evening? It may only be costing pence to keep these devices on standby overnight, but over the whole building, over the course of a year, it all adds up. Which leads nicely onto my next tip, turning off heating in rooms that aren't being used and setting thermostats appropriately. The World Health Organization suggests that 18 degrees is the ideal temperature for most people's homes. Simply by reducing your thermostat by as little as one degree can save you 10% off your energy bills. Also, if your practice has electric heaters that are sometimes used, can anything be done to prevent this? Does the heating need to come on earlier or be set higher in certain rooms? Tip four is around printing. The first question to ask yourself is, do you really need to use the printer in the first place? Many patients now prefer to be sent links to websites and reminders for appointments on their phones. And if you do need to print, are all your printers set to double-sided as standard and do you use recycled paper? Recycled paper has come a long way in recent years with the quality now being similar to that of non-recycled paper and it is the greenest option as it uses less energy, water and produces lower carbon emissions to manufacture. For tip five, we need to think about inhalers again. The propellant gases in metered dose inhalers account for approximately 13% of the NHS's carbon footprint in relation to delivery of care. Organisations such as Greener Practice and Green Inhaler have produced useful resources which can be accessed free online and include tables which can help us to compare the environmental impact of different inhalers and how we can swap patients to inhalers which have the same effects but with lower carbon footprints. And change is possible. Greener practice highlight that in England, approximately 70% of inhalers prescribed are metered dose inhalers. In contrast to other countries, such as Sweden, where the figure is only 13%. So, how do we go about making some changes? Step one needs to be optimising asthma and COPD care. If patients are needing their salbutamol inhalers three or more times a week or needing more than three salbutamol inhalers a year, then this suggests poor control and that we should review their care by checking inhaler techniques, spacer use, reviewing preventative therapy, giving smoking cessation advice and considering further investigations where appropriate. Step two is considering whether the patient would be suitable for a switch to a more environmentally friendly inhaler. Dry powdered inhalers such as Ventolin, Accuhaler or Bricanil Turbohaler and the soft mist inhaler Respiromat have the lowest carbon footprint. Please note though that for some patients, for example the very young or very elderly, these inhalers may be tricky to use. Also, for acute exacerbations, having a salbutamol meter dose inhaler with a spacer is preferable as patients may struggle to take the fast deep breath in required to use a dry powdered inhaler at these times. If you do switch a patient's inhaler, Asthma and Lung UK have some useful videos explaining how to use all the different types of inhalers which can be shared with patients and staff to keep everyone up to date. Thirdly, Think about whether the strength of the patient's inhaler can be increased to decrease the number of doses required and hence the number of inhalers used. For example, prescribing one dose of a 200 microgram clenal inhaler twice a day rather than two doses of a 100 microgram clenal inhaler twice a day. As a final thought on asthma, a study in 2019 in The Lancet 
estimated that 4 million children develop asthma every year because of air pollution from cars and trucks, which is equivalent to 11,000 new cases a day. For tip six, we should think about medication in general. In 2015, NICE published a guideline on optimising patient medication and estimated that by implementing this guideline, we could save 202 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions per 100,000 people. They estimated that between 30 to 50 percent of people on long term medication don't take it as intended. They outlined a series of recommendations, including having clear systems for identifying, reporting and learning from medicines related safety incidents and ensuring clear communication between different care settings. This made me reflect upon how accurate the medications are when I print out a summary for a patient to take to hospital. Is the list of medications on there up to date? Or does it include medications that they're no longer taking, but which are still on their current screen on EMIS, which could potentially cause confusion? Ensuring that this is checked before sending a patient to hospital, along with carrying out regular medication reviews, updating or removing any old alerts on patient records, and linking medications with their indications, can all help to reduce unnecessary waste and aid patient safety. On the subject of medications, a tip I recently learnt is that when it comes to vaginal oestrogen, Prescribing Vagirux rather than Vagifem is better for the planet. Vagirux contains one single reusable vaginal applicator per pack of 24 vaginal tablets, as opposed to Vagifem, which contains 24 disposable applicators. For this reason, and as it's cheaper, Vagirux is now becoming the first line option in many areas. For tip seven, if COVID has taught us one thing, it's how to do telephone consultations. And going forward, they certainly have their place within general practice. For some situations, they work very well clinically, and from an environmental point of view, they are great, as it means less miles travelled on our roads. A review in the Future Healthcare Journal showed that using telemedicine in healthcare created a saving of between 0.7 to 372 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents per consultation. Tip eight is to think about our outside spaces. In one place where I work, earlier this year, they transformed a bare area of ground by scattering wildflower seeds. And this summer, it's been full of cornflowers and poppies not to mention bees and other insects. In another practice I visited recently, they've created a space with about 10 or so raised beds, which local people can use. And again, this summer, they've had courgettes and tomatoes growing, as well as many flowers. Now, I realise that this isn't a practical suggestion for all surgeries, but why not have a think if maybe a planter or a few hanging baskets could be added where you work, as every little change can help to make a difference. The Centre for Sustainable Healthcare was involved in the Be Healthy project, which helped GP surgeries in Oxfordshire to create perennial borders, which were not only attractive to bees, but also aimed to benefit patients, staff and visitors. For more inspiration or ideas on the best plants you can use, you can download their Be Healthy project guide a link for which is included in the show notes. My next tip is to think about your kitchens. A big bugbearer of mine is dishwashers. When used properly, dishwashers can be more environmentally friendly and more hygienic than washing by hand. But I've worked at several practices where no one ever empties the dishwasher completely. And so a few clean things are removed and new dirty things added every day but at the back there must be cups that have been in there for years and had hundreds of continuous washers. If this sounds familiar, maybe setting up a dishwasher rotor may help. Also, you could review any single-use plastic cups or cutlery that you have and swap them for more sustainable and ultimately more cost-effective alternatives. Which brings us lastly 
to tip number 10, which is all about getting everyone involved. The environment is everyone's responsibility and we can all play our part. When students, trainees or other staff are thinking about a good audit to do, try suggesting a sustainability one. For example, asking staff where they would put old cardboard or used batteries. When new staff or locums start, why not have a page in their welcome information on sustainability, asking them to turn off lights, computers and printers at the end of the day and letting them know where the recycling facilities are. And maybe as part of your next staff meeting, have sustainability on the agenda so that further ideas can be shared and then words put into action. Plus, people are less likely to get annoyed at you for turning off all their electrical equipment if they know why you're doing it. So, in summary, we have discussed 10 ways that we can all help to make a difference to our planet. We have covered a variety of issues, from recycling batteries and medical blister packs, to thinking twice about the inhalers we prescribe. I will leave you then with one last sobering fact. The World Health Organization estimates that between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea and heat stress. So thank you all for listening. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Please do have a look at the show notes that accompany this episode at gpnotebookpodcast.com and we'd be very grateful if you consider following the podcast and leaving us a review on your favourite podcast platform. Feel free to get in touch via social media at gpnotebook or email support at gpnotebook.com if you have any questions, comments or ideas for future podcasts. And it would be great to hear about any sustainability projects you've been involved in or any further tips you have. You should also visit us at gpnotebookeducation.com to register for our virtual GP Notebook study groups and download free resources and shortcuts to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. Right. I'm off to turn off some microwaves. Goodbye.